Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to reduce your input delay and latency. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe as I will be posting videos like this every other week on Mondays at 5pm East. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that our USB devices are set up properly. To do this, we're going to hold shift and right click our Windows button and then head over to device manager. In here you can expand it a bit so it's easier to see and then go over to view and the devices by connection. In here you want to find your USB host controller and then expand it. If you have any USB devices plugged into any PCI device, I recommend you switch it and plug your USB devices directly into your motherboard as any PCI devices usually have higher latency. If you can, you might have AMD and in that case you will have two USB host controllers most of the time and you would want to put your most important devices on the second one and try to disable the first one but if you have too many devices on the first one then try to put your least important devices on that one instead if you're on intel you might have only one and if that's the case that's fine you want to try and disable your generic usb hubs by right clicking it and then clicking disable device you might have to unplug whatever's in it first though and you want to keep switching the ports for your devices until you get them as regular USB composite devices. So as you can see here, I have my keyboard as a USB composite device and my mouse as well. If you have too many devices and you need to use the generic USB hub, make sure that your least important devices are on that instead. And for some of these as well, you can right click them, click properties, power management and uncheck this box right here to make sure that you don't have any power savings enabled. So the next thing we're going to do is make sure that we're not taking any device affinities into the big 2026. The reason being for this is because multi-threaded rendering sucks. It doesn't evenly distribute your CPU usage across all cores. As you can see right here, my third core is on like 80% usage while my fourth core is on like 7 and 8% usage. And this is because, like I said, multi-threaded rendering isn't that good when it comes to things like entropy or randomness, which is a hard task. Your game usually just sets it to a random core each time it loads and you can't really determine what core that is. And you don't want to set your CPU to handle all of your USB hub processes on a single core and then your game ends up using that same core in order to handle most of its hard input. And in that case, your USB delay and latency will just be increasingly high because that core is just doing way too much work and it's also handling your USB inputs which is not something that you would want. So in that case, we would remove any affinities that we have or just set our USB hub to all of our ports. To do this, you wanna join my Discord server, which is linked in the description below. Once you join it, you wanna head over to programs and then head over to interrupt affinity policy tool and download it. Once you have it downloaded, you wanna run it as administrator. And in here, you just wanna spam U until you find your USB hub controller. In that case, it's called USB XHCI compliant host controller for me. And to make sure that we don't have any affinities, we can either click delete mask or we can just click set mask and then either choose select none or select all if we want all of our cores to handle it. And then click OK, OK. And you could choose to restart the device or not. I'd rather just restart my computer. So I'm gonna click no, OK, OK, and then done. And that and just make sure that I don't have any affinities set to my USB hub anymore. So the next thing we're gonna do is set a process that affects our input indirectly to real-time priority. To do this, we're gonna click Windows key R and then type the reg edit in here and then click enter. In here, we're gonna go to HK local machine, software, Microsoft, Windows, and T current version, image file execution options, CR, csrss.exe, we're going to expand that, click perf options, and then in here if you don't have these you can create them, but if you do have them you want to make sure that CPU priority class is set to 4 hexadecimal and then click OK, and then IO priority is set to 3 hexadecimal and then click OK. So another thing we're going to also be leaving in 2025 is low polling rates and low DPI. It's just obvious that if you have a higher polling rate, it's just better because you want to be sending as much input to your PC as possible. To do this, you want to go into the software, whatever device you're using, and then find its setting for polling rate. For me on my Viper 8K Hertz, it's on performance, and if I scroll down, it's right here. I want to be sending it to my highest option available. If I can't set it to the highest option, then I would set it to the 
second highest option or the one below it but ideally you want to be using the highest option if you get some type of stuttering because your PC just sucks or it's not set up properly then you'd have to lower it until you get something that's stable but like I said ideally you want to be using the highest one as for DPI you also want to be using a high DPI as well it's just another known fact and it's been proven many times that having a higher DPI results in lower input delay as you can see right here with 100 DPI you had a 57 millisecond input delay right here whereas with 3200 you had 18.5 it's the same thing right here, you can see with the same exact pouring rate but with a higher DPI you have lower latency right here. So you want to be using the highest DPI you possibly can. Now this mouse goes up to 20,000 but 20,000 is just straight up unusable so I'm going to keep it on 3200. It's going to take some time getting used to if you are already used to or conditioned to lower DPIs but once you make the switch it's really worth it as that lower latency is much nicer than having that high latency with the low DPI. So this last trick is for those of you guys on keyboard and mouse and it's basically just enabling 101 pixel movements so that Windows isn't remapping your inputs to anything else, it's just taking it as it is. So to do that you would want to click Windows key R and then type reg edit. In here you want to go to H key, current user, control panel and then mouse. If you don't have any of these, you want to create them. This one, this one, mouse sensitivity, speed, threshold, and threshold 2 are all string values. So you want to click new and then string value right here and then set them to those names. You want to make sure that mouse sensitivity is set to 10. And then mouse speed is set to 0. Mouse threshold 1 is set to 0. And mouse threshold 2 is also set to 0. Once you do that, you want to create a reg binary, which is right here, and then name it smooth mouse x curve. I already have it here. And if you do have it, then that's fine. Most of the times you do most of the time you do have it. But in here you basically want to highlight everything and delete it. And you just want to spam zeros till you get to the 20th row. And when you get to the 20th row, you want to fill in that row as well until you see the 28th row but make sure that you don't put any more zeros in and that the 28th row is empty whereas row 20 and everything above is full with zeros once you do that you want to click ok and you want to do that also for mouse y curve you delete everything in here and spam zeros until row 20 is full and you can see row 28 and once you do that you want to click ok and then you're done now one thing also to keep into account is if you are on laptop, setting your smooth mouse X curve and smooth mouse Y curve might disable your trackpad and might not allow you to use it. So if you do want to keep your trackpad then you can skip this step but if you don't care about that then you can just do what we just did anyways. That's it for you guys in today's video. If you are too lazy to learn about optimizing your PC or you just want me to do it for you, you can go over to my Discord server and head over to the services channel and create a ticket to book an optimization service with me. Otherwise, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe as I will be posting my videos like this every other week and Mondays at 5pm East. If you have any content suggestions, you can also join my Discord server and let me know in the chat what you want to see. That's it for you guys today. See you in the next one.